Hey GED students, Lakeisha emailed me at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com to say that she was stuck on this problem. So she had been working on my website, the GED Math Crash Course. She's in the geometry unit, great unit, working on solving for a missing dimension, which is definitely a concept that shows up on the GED. Um, she was just working on the beginning level practice, but the very last problem here is a doozy. It's challenging. Um, yes, it's a beginning level practice, but it's going to provide challenge even, I think, for an experience level student. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So it says a trapezoid has an area of 24 square inches. Its height is four inches. And what if its bases is seven inches? Find the length of the remaining base. So first of all, what are they asking me to do or to find? Well, they say find the length of the remaining base. We're asked to find the length of a base. Well, a base of what? Going back into this problem, we see that it's the base of a trapezoid. So we're asked to find the base of the trapezoid. Now, you could hit up that GED formula sheet all day long, and you're never going to find a base of a trapezoid formula, and there's a reason for that. The formulas, uh, there don't solve for dimensions like bases they use them to find other things and so uh, a lot of students would get stumped right here well kate i don't know what to do here's what i do know okay take a look even though i don't have a formula for base i see here that i do know this trapezoid's area. So, no, I don't have a formula for base, but I do have a formula for the area of a trapezoid, which of course has a base in it. So let's go ahead and get that formula out. So now, don't worry, you don't have to have this memorized. You pull it right off your GED formula sheet, which you'll have with you when you go to take your test. Um, that being said, if you don't have one right now, I highly suggest you Google it. GED formula sheet, look under the area section, and you'll see this is the area of a trapezoid formula. Lakeisha chose the right formula, so she was up, uh, you know, working really well up until that point. And so this formula says the area of a trapezoid is equal to one half times the height times the quantity, the quantity of the two bases, or times the sum of the two bases. So now once we have a formula uh, with algebra, with geometry, with anything, once we have that formula, we are going to do substitution. We're going to plug in any information we know. So what do we know? Let's come back to this problem. Well, we know the area. This problem says the area is 24 square inches. So once where I once saw the A for area, I'm going to plug in 24. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna use a different color for the changes I make, so I'm not changing the equals, I'm not changing the one half, but I am changing the height because the height is another known value. Take a look, it says its height is four inches. Well, it's not a mystery. We don't have to use a letter, it's a number. We're gonna put four right there. Notice how I use parentheses uh, to put the four there. Now, Lakeisha, I know that you changed one half to 0.5, that's totally legit. Anybody can do that, okay? In math, we're always allowed to trade out two equivalent things. So if you'd rather write 0.5 right here than one half because you like decimals better, that's totally fine. But you just have to know that one half is the same as 0.5. But I'm not gonna bother because I like fractions, okay? And now notice, this B1 plus B2 is in parentheses. If you drop those parentheses, you're gonna get a very different answer. So hold on to those parentheses and now let's plug in anything we do know about the bases now take a look it says one of its bases is seven inches you might say which one doesn't really matter bases are interchangeable you can plug it in for either one of these b's b1 which just means the first base or b2 which means the second base i'll plug it in for b1 again it won't matter i'll get the exact same answer Okay, now I still have this plus sign and then I still have B2. Now you can write B2, but what I find is when students leave that little two around, they get confused thinking it's math they have to do. That two just means the second base. So I'm just gonna use the letter B. There's only one, there's only one base left for me to solve for. It doesn't really matter whether you call it B2 or you just call it B. 
All right, so now here's my lovely substitution. Lakeisha also did this very well. So you might say, well, what the heck? Why'd she even need you? Well, here's where she got stumped. And here's, I think, where a lot of students would get stumped. We can pick the formula, we can plug into it, but when the algebra looks gross, we start panicking. So this is this great pr wisdom principle I want you to put in your notes. Again, this is a wisdom principle, not a rule. We don't have to do it, but oh my gosh, if we do, it will make our lives easier. So Kate's basic wisdom principle is simplify before you solve. Yeah, I need to solve. I need to find out what B is equal to. But there's a lot of numbers over there with B. I mean, look at this. One half, four, the seven, the parentheses. There's a lot going on. If I can make this simpler, I can simplify it, it's going to be easier to solve. So what I'm going to do to simplify it is do any math I know how to do. If I know how to do it, it's straightforward math. Well, psh, let's do it. So take a look at this. You might say, Kate, I don't know how to do that. That's a fraction. Yeah, yeah. Your calculator does though, okay? So even if you're panicking, your calculator's got this. But right there, that says one half times four. Or another way to think of it, one half of four. And some of you guys might be saying, how did she know that was times? Like, it didn't say times back here in the problem. Well, it's times because the two things are shoved together. In math, when two things are shoved together with nothing between them, they are timesing. So one half times h. All right, so sorry, distraction. So if I'm gonna do one half of four or one half times four, I can do that one in my head. Half of four would just be two. You can also feel, feel free to do that in your calculator. Um, and so I've made a part of this problem a little simpler. I'm gonna drop everything else down that I haven't touched. So I used the one half of four and that became two, but I haven't used the seven plus B yet. My problem just got a little simpler. It's easier to look at. Now, you actually have a choice right now of what you're going to do, and it really doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, but I'm just going to keep following my lovely wisdom principle, which is, whoa, I can't spell simplify, which is simplify before you solve. And I see that this two here that I have is shoved up against this parentheses, meaning that two is multiplying by that entire grouping. Well, <laughs> I know how to do that. I know how to multiply a grouping by a number. That's the distributive property. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 2 times 7 is 14. And if I add B twice or adding B two times, two times adding B, I'm going to end up adding two Bs. Or 2 times B is 2B, another way to think of it. So now I have this even simpler equation. 24 is equal to 14 plus 2b. And for a lot of you, you're flipping off the video already. You're like, Kate, now that it's simpler, I know what to do. And that's why I say, yeah, okay, for sure. So simplify before you solve. Stop getting panicked about, I don't know everything I have to do. And just look for something you know how to do. Because each time it gets simpler, you'll have a better idea of what's going on. So I'm just going to rewrite this so I have some space over here to work. And now this is just a little two-step equation. I'm working here to get B alone. You might say, Kate, well, there's more simplifying you could do. You could add here. No, 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 I can't. I can't add 14, which is a plain old number. We call that a constant. And 2B, which is a B term. It's some number of Bs. Remember, we can only add the same kinds of things. In algebra, we call that like terms. So these can't add. So I'm done simplifying. There's no more simplifying I could possibly do. My only choice now is to solve, to work to get B alone. So that's what I'll do. Remember to move anything adding or subtracting with B first. So I'll take away this 14. I can make any kind of a change I want to an equation, including doing the opposite. As long as I do it to both sides, I'll take 14 away from that side as well. And let's see what our new equation will be after making that change. 24 minus 14 is 10. 14 minus 14, of course, zeroes out. So 0 and 2b is just, hey, 2b. You guys, I want to like quote Shakespeare right now. 2b or not 2b? Well, it's not going to be 2b for very long because now I need to isolate b. I need to get it alone. So what are this 2 and this b doing there multiplying? So if I want to get rid of this 2, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide away 2. Again, you can literally do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it too both sides. So let me hop across and divide by 
two as well on the other side so that my equation stays nice and balanced so that the two sides stay equal. 10 divided by two, of course, is just five. Oh, multiplying and dividing by two are opposites. They will cancel. B's alone. Look at that. I solved for the missing base. Now, this is a geometry problem, so technically we should have an understanding of five what? What am I saying when I say five is equal to B? Well, what I'm saying is that the base, the base is five and five what? Let's go look into our problem. A trapezoid has an area of 24 square inches. Its height is four inches. Okay, and its base is seven inches. Hey, we're all up in inches. This is a five inch base. Now I got a whole a lot of students who would say, no, 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 Kate, I see the word area. That must be square inch, five square inches. Careful, careful, careful. Just because area pops up somewhere in my problem doesn't mean I'm suddenly in square inches. Area itself is me measured in square inches, yes. Like look, 24 square inches, there it is. But dimensions, dimensions like the bases, of a trapezoid or the height of a trapezoid. Those are just lines and lines are going to be measured like with a ruler, plain old regular inches. And so this is a dimension. And so my base is just five inches. All right. Ooh, that was super fun. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topics, be sure to drop it in the comments. And I just want to take a moment before we end our video to say thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. You guys are such a blessing. I have, n I can't even tell you enough what a blessing it is to know that there's people out there who uh, care enough about this ministry and about helping GED students to commit uh, to a just a small donation each month to support my work and what I'm doing. You guys are the best. Thank you. All right. Happy learning.